are starting to get concerned. The nation struggles with a shortage of CO2. Beer taps could soon go dry. The record-setting heat wave of the past few days has pushed California to the brink. We are all under an excessive heat warning. What's going on in the world right now? Seems like everything happening is just trying to keep me down and keep me from brewing. But not this home brewer. The heat and lack of CO2 won't stop me. And I got a thirst that needs quenching. And the only thing that can do that is a crisp and cold pilsner. Today, I'll take on the challenges and use some tricks and hacks to knock out a delicious Italian pilsner with a citrusy twist. I'm Trent Musho and this is The Brew Show. Let's brew a Lemoncello Italian pilsner. When deciding what to brew in this grueling heat, a refreshing pilsner or lager always sounds best. But the hot weather makes for less than ideal conditions for lager fermentations. If you didn't know, lagers prefer to ferment much colder, closer to something like 55 degrees Fahrenheit, about 13 degrees Celsius. So unless you're brewing way ahead of schedule, like back in the winter, or you have some nice chilling setup, lagers are out of the question, right? Well, not exactly. There is one trick you can use to make fermenting in the hot temps work. Not only that, but it can double as a way to preserve CO2 and minimize the amount needed to carbonate your brew. The solution to our problem is pressure fermentation. By fermenting under pressure, you can get away with pushing the temps of your fermentation well above that 55 or so lager temp. Room temp? No problem. What about even hotter? Well, sure it'll work, but if you really start to push things beyond about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you might start to get some funky off flavors. So ideally, you still want to keep things somewhat in check. I found that 70 degrees is a good spot to be, but if you can go even lower than that, even better. And while that beer ferments under pressure, you're also capturing some of that CO2 that's produced. That 15 PSI or so will give you a leg up on carbonation when it comes time to getting things fizzy. It won't fully carbonate your brew, but it's a bit like preheating the oven. It ensures you'll get cooking faster, or drinking faster in this case. So how do you pressure ferment? Well really, there's only two components you need. First is a fermenter that can hold pressure. This can be a dedicated fermenter. There's a ton of them nowadays, and some of them are at a great price point. Or you can just use a keg. You might already have one, or if you're shopping online, you can find them relatively cheap, or at least cheaper than some of those dedicated fermenters. And the best part about fermenting in a keg is you can just serve straight from it when ready. And secondly, you'll need a spunding valve. This is a small device that connects to the gas side of your fermenter, or keg, and it regulates how much pressure to hold. 15 PSI is the max you want, but 12 PSI is the best. Too much pressure, you can do some damage to your yeasty boys. A bonus item to minimize yeast pickup is a floating dip tube. This is just a long piece of tubing and a floating ball that replaces your dip tube if you're using a keg. Most pressure fermenters already come with this. The ball floats on top of your beer and pulls liquid from the top, so you get the cleanest, clearest beer, and not all the yeasty sludge at the bottom. They're pretty cheap, and I'll leave some links below if you're interested. So that all sounds great. Lagers in the summer the way it should be. Now let's put it to the test and brew up an Italian Pilsner. And on top of that, we'll spike it with some homemade limoncello to really bring home that citrusy, refreshing flavor. You might be wondering what an Italian Pilsner is. And no, I'm not talking about this Italian Pilsner. This Italian Pilsner is a more recent creation. And what makes it unique is its strong characteristic of European hops, especially the German variety. Not only on the brew day, but while dry hopping, which paired with a relatively simple grain bill makes this highly crushable and has a nice fruity or even floral bitter finish. The idea of adding limoncello is just my brain trying to find a way to make this even more Italian. When I was on my honeymoon in Amalfi, limoncello was everywhere and we drank it often. Probably because these giant lemons that are the size of your head are everywhere and they're unique to southern Italy. These jumbo lemons are actually mainly pith with very little juice, which makes them perfect for making limoncello. And when I got home from my trip, I was obsessed and started making my own. So don't worry, I'll show you how to make some, even if you don't want to add it to this beer. It's still super delicious and worth making. All right, how about we jump into the brew day and start making beer? A huge thank you to the partners that support this channel. Northern Brewer, who supplied all the ingredients for this brew, with speed and excellent customer service, as always, and to a new partner, Clawhammer Supply. Today, I'll be brewing on their electric 120 volt system, which is awesome because I can actually try brewing inside for once. Pray that I don't make a mess. But if you're interested in or thinking about making the jump to an electric brew in a bag system, I have a link in the description for you to check out. It's an affiliate link, so if you do pick one up, I'll get a little kickback and you'll support the channel. 
And don't worry if you don't have a fancy system. You can totally brew the same recipe on a simple BIAB setup like I've shown many times before and get awesome results. So to start, I heated up six gallons of water. I'm actually doing a 4.25 gallon batch today since I'll be fermenting in a keg, which can only hold five gallons. And I'll need a little bit of headspace for fermentation. I was aiming for a mash temp of 148 degrees Fahrenheit to get a dry and crisp finish. The green bill was super simple, 93% Pilsner malt and 7% Kara Munich to just add a touch of color and flavor interest. I let this sit at 148, 45 minutes. Loving how this system is electric and it can actually regulate the temperature for me. No more turning on the burner and stirring everything up. I can live with that. After the 45 minutes, I pulled out the basket, of course doing that Martin Keen lean. And once the wort was all drained out, I proceeded to heat up to a 30 minute boil. At the top of the boil, I did the first hop addition, one ounce of pearl. Perle? I'm not exactly sure. Either way, I added it in. Pearl is a German hop and said to have herbal, citrus, menthol, and even green fruit characteristics. Green fruit, that's an interesting descriptor. I can think of a lot of green fruits. I wonder which one they're referring to. Oh well, I'm really hoping mainly for the herbal and citrus notes here, so we'll see. Pearl is going to be the only hop variety for this beer, so I should have a good idea of what it's like by the end of this. Moving to the end of oil, I added in 0.33 ounces at flame out and then chilled down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, then transferred into my empty and sanitized keg with a floating dip tube. The OG on this one landed right around 1.046. For yeast, I'll be using the trusty W3470. Loggers definitely need a good amount of yeast, so either do a starter or double up on yeast. Last step is to add a spunning valve. I showed how to make this one specifically on my temp control video, but it's basically just a gas connect, a bit of tubing, pressure gauge, and a pressure regulator. It's actually recommended to not let it pressurize until 24 hours after yeast pitch. The yeast needs that oxygen to bud and multiply. So you could just keep the PRV open until the next day. Or if you want, just add the spunning valve now. Honestly, I really haven't noticed a dramatic difference yet. But what I did decide to do was dry hop at the 36 hour mark and tossed in 0.77 ounce of pearl, loosey goosey into the keg. Close it up and then let it go. From there, I just let it ferment. Whether that's at room temp or if you have room in your kegerator to keep it a tad bit cooler. Actually, I had nothing in my kegerator at this time, so I just set it to 69 just to help it out slightly, but totally not necessary. Pressure fermenting also helps speed up the fermentation, so likely your beer will be done fermenting in like four days. The final gravity was 1.008, meaning this one comes in at 5% ABV. If you wanted a regular Italian pills, you can stop right here and just attach it to your kegerator. As long as you have a floating dip tube, you'll get clear beer until you get close to that yeast cake at the bottom, which should give you about 3.75 to four gallons of beer. And the longer you age this, the clearer it'll be. But if you want to take it to the next level, then let's make some limoncello. It's actually super easy, and you don't even need the juice of the lemons, just the zest. So you won't be wasting any lemons on this. Also, this recipe will make way more than you'll need, but then you'll have extra for later, which is a win in my book. You'll need some vodka. I'm just using 375 milliliters of Smirnoff, but use whatever kind you like. Five lemons, a cup or so of sugar, and a cup of water. All you need to do is peel the lemons, being careful not to get any of the white pith, which can make it more bitter. But if you do get some, don't worry, you can just scrape it off. Once they're all peeled, toss them into a container, add the sugar, water, and then vodka. Shake or stir it up to get all that sugar to dissolve, and then set it on the counter for about four to six days until it's nice and infused. That's limoncello. Just strain it and you're good to go. Now it's time to add it to the beer. To try and avoid overdoing it, I did a dosing test. Taking the same amount of beer into three glasses and then adding different amounts of limoncello. Tasting each one until I found the perfect amount for my taste. And then scaled it up to two and a half gallons. Why two and a half gallons? Because I'm gonna transfer the finished Pilsner into my mini keg instead of adding it to the whole batch. That way I have some options. So with my scaled up amount of limoncello, I added it to the keg. Close it up and purged with CO2. Then using some tubing with liquid connects on both sides, I just attach them and let the beer transfer over. As long as the pressure is less than the new keg, the beer will continue to flow. And since the beer is cold, you can watch the condensation on the side as the beer fills up. 
And once it's done, I disconnected the tubing and threw it in the kegerator, ready to drink nearly instantly. If you're a fan of citrus, you're gonna love the limoncello version. It pairs perfectly with the Italian pills, especially the pearl hops, which in the end had a nice mix between herbal tea and a slight lemon flavor. But whether you choose to add the limoncello or keep it plain, can't go wrong with this pilsner. Highly refreshing and highly crushable. Perfect on hot days like today. Cheers and happy burn. And if you're looking for more summer sippers, you can't go wrong with a crispy boy like this one. Click this video to find out how you can make a Bud Light, but better at home.